In the name of Jesus, amen. You shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills fall before you. You shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Sounds like a pretty good time to have when nature itself is celebrating our merely walking through it. The Lord is guaranteeing his word. He's backing it with what he has already done and showing what he's going to do. He uses his own creation, talking about how the word comes out. God sends his word to earth, and like the snow and the rain, they hit us. They do what God wants to have done, and then they go on their way. You can't store up God's word. You can receive it. You can live in it and let it pass through you, just like the plants. They take in the water, but it doesn't stay there. As they go through their life, what water they've taken in goes out, and more has to come in once again. And when everything's working right and the plants are getting enough water at the right time, there's a bountiful harvest. Now, sometimes harvests aren't as bountiful as others, are they? This year is going to be a poor year in much of the country for all sorts of agriculture. Too much heat, not enough rain, and all of those other things. But that doesn't mean that these things don't happen under the circumstances where they're intended to happen. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty. What word does God speak to you then? He certainly reminds you that he made you. Even if he doesn't do so directly in our Old Testament reading, the very fact that these other things are part of his domain means that the rest of creation likely is too, and we do know that. God sends the rain and the snow to water the earth. God sends his word to refresh us. And how we receive it then is going to be how we live it. How we love God's word is how then we love God. And we know how much he loved us as we live in his word. And despite all the troubles that you've had, and by the time we get to chapter 55 in Isaiah, the Lord has laid out a long catalog of woes. He has promised judgment. He has visited some of them already. It's going to get worse, and yet you shall go out in joy. You're going to walk out and have a beautiful day. Well, you will today. Perhaps not the natural beauty that you want because it looks like we're going to have more of Canada in our air as this day goes along. It will likely be hot. Not the super hot maybe that we had, but July hot and humid. And if you don't have anything better to do, why do you want to go dragging through the heat and the humidity and the Canadian wildfire smoke? But that's okay, too. Even if you just go out in heart and mind, you're going to go out and enjoy if you keep these words in mind and in heart. God has it all. You're part of his creation. You're bigger and better than the rain and the snow that come out, but you are part of what God made. Establishing directly with his word or with a special building once he got to our first parents. A little bit extra hands-on to show just how much he cared for us. And he gives you life so that you might have joy, so that you might have peace. He calls you to account when you don't do what he says, when you disagree with his word for no reason other than your own heart, when you follow the temptations of this world. We know that all that glitters is not gold, but even if it is gold that's glittering, if it's not on the path that God has laid out for us, then we shouldn't pursue it. It may make us happy for a time, but we lose long-term joy. Just like getting even with people in one way or another it may make us feel happy for a time, but it brings no lasting joy because it brings us away from our relationship with God. 
And quite frankly, it messes up our relationship with other people too. Carrying grudges, hating in any way, shape, or form, sloth. There's all sorts of sins that we can look at and dial ourselves in on the mirror and say, that, more than that, but all, yeah, that's all there in one way, shape, or form. And if you try going out with that, you will lose the joy that God gives you. Because God wants you to have the joy of being a cleansed, whole, complete Christian. Somebody who comes into his presence with thanksgiving. Somebody who, whether they go out of church, go out of their house, or just take a little mental vacation and think about the good things of this world. Or spiritual vacation and get down into God's word a little bit more and read it and ponder it just a little bit more. All of those things, and you're going out and you're coming in, God brings joy when you are right with God. Not always happiness, not always giddiness. Scripture tells us how Jesus went to the cross for the joy of it, but not for the happiness of it. He went out of joy because he was doing what the Father wanted, and he was doing what he wanted, and he was saving us so that we could live in eternal joy with him, with his Father. And he had to hurt and suffer a lot for that, but for him it was worth it. You're worth it. And if that doesn't help to bring you joy, then what does? Jesus Christ died on the cross for each one of you individually. Yes, he died for all. But never forget that he died for you. He went to the cross for the joy of saving you, of blessing you, of receiving you into the eternal kingdom. On earth, through water and the word, sustaining you then also through his supper, but also in eternity, when he comes in judgment, you have already been judged as you believe in him. And found not guilty, found holy and righteous. And when God raises you up, it's not to point a finger at you, but rather to say, come here, you're mine. Because you have lived in my son. Your days won't always be happy. I heard some of your aches and pains today, and I know others that other people have. But you will always be joyful when you have Christ living in you, wrapped around you, protecting you, healing you, guarding you, guiding you, sending his angels to have charge over you, pointing always to his Father who can't wait to meet you face to face. He already knows you that well, and he wants you to know him that well also. He wants you to look at whatever troubles this world has and say, they're passing, and I'm just passing through. But my joy, my life, and my hope aren't pinned on whether or not the rain falls or the snow, whether we have clear air overhead or it's all cloudy and nasty looking like today, whether we have a lot in health and finances and mental faculties or anything else, we still have the joy of knowing that Jesus died for us, that he rose for us, and that he is coming for us once again. Go out in joy, celebrate, because the harvest includes you. You are some of those crops that Jesus is talking up, sprouting up. What comes in your life, whether it's a hundredfold or less, is in large part due to God's blessing, but you know, of course, that you can have a part in it not being quite such a good harvest. But God continues to supply so that you can continue to provide. That there will be a greater bounty than you would ever achieve on your own. That you will excel in the things that God wants you to. That you will bring his gifts back to him in thanksgiving, even as he lets you keep so many of them. And when you leave here and hear that last time that the Lord is going out with you, whether you're starting up your vehicle or just sitting down to snack a little bit after church, whatever happens the rest of this day, this week, this month, this year, this lifetime, you can do it in joy and confidence because God loves you. He has forgiven you. He will forgive you. And he will always call you to be his. You don't have to walk through life with a grin from one ear to the other, but 
when your heart smiles at knowing that Christ is nestled there, that Christ covers you, that Christ invites you in, that Christ receives you and blesses you, that should bring the kind of joy that nothing in this life, nor death, can take away. God grant you that joy and that certainty that you are Christ's and Christ is yours forever and ever. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen.